Good evening, sci-fi movie nerds, and welcome to another episode of the Sci-Fi Movie Guy. This is our Rogue One non-spoilers slash spoilers review. I got Jason from Trench Run Rebels here. Ah, minds are blown. That's all I'm going to say right now. I'm going to tell you how this is going to work. So, about the first four minutes of this video, non-spoiler review, we're going to give you lots of warnings. So you can watch this if you haven't seen the movie. You're okay right now. Don't worry about it. We're going to just talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, give you a rating out of 10. Then we're going to give you lots of warning. We're going to put up a spoilers review right there. And then we're going to spoil the crap out of this movie. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> let's get started with the non-spoiler review. So, the first thing for Rogue One we're going to talk about is what we liked about this movie. So, Jason... I know you've been dying to talk, so <laughs> well, go for it. We just got back from the movie theater. We literally just watched this thing, and we're, we're both kind of buzzing right now. This movie was brilliant. For a Star Wars movie, this movie was brilliant. For a movie, this movie was brilliant. If you are a Star Wars fan, go see this movie. You will love it to pieces. Uh, what did I like about this movie? Without spoiling. Without spoiling. What, what? I liked when they when the movie started, and then all the way until it ended, I, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be able to tell you more about that in about three and a half minutes when from, we get from into From here spoilers. to here, I, I liked everywhere in between. Uh, it, was, it was great. Um, if, if you want me to say what I didn't like about the movie, yeah. there was very little that I didn't like. There were a few, and this isn't really spoiling anything, just to say there were a few CGI effects. That uh, CGI, practical effects, CGI, it starts to take me out just a little bit. It takes me out of the movie just a little bit. And there are a couple spots. Oh, you mean like the prequels? <laughs> <laughs> Those were pioneers of their times. <laughs> just kind of rub it in. I know, I know. Um, as far as we've come with digital effects, there are still moments where it pulls you out where you notice that it's a digital effect. And um, they they couldn't have done the film without these, but it just pulled me out for a second, and I'm like, oh, that's a CGI effect. But yeah, other than that, whew, this movie was great. So you all know Darth Vader's in this movie. It was in the trailers. Yep, he's in the trailers. Um, what did you? What's an overall impression of Vader in this movie? Don't give away any spoilers, but what did you think of the way they used him? Can I say what can I say? You can say I like Darth it or Vader I didn't like it. Is a bad guy and a bad ass. And you liked it. And I liked it. Awesome. Um, so the things I liked about this movie, non-spoilers again, I loved the music. You know what? Mm -hmm. I was really worried about yeah. the music because I had heard he only had three and a half weeks to put together this score, get it all done, get the band in, record it, get it on film, and I was really worried. And you know what? I think the music paid off for me. It was different enough from a regular Star Wars movie, but all those underlying John Williams tones were still there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I loved the music. I'm definitely going to be getting the album, and uh, I'll probably have it on my iPod and be listening to it while I'm driving to work, because yeah. I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah, the music definitely, like you said, had the tonality. Um, but different. It, it was different, yeah. but very reminiscent yeah i knew that you're still watching a star wars movie yeah and the other thing that i liked about this movie and again no spoilers because you've seen it in the trailers um i loved Jyn Erso. like yeah. i love this character yeah it Fantastic was movie. it was well developed it, it you know you get to see and you know in the trailers you're seeing her young and then old and then yeah. young and yeah yeah, they really did it right. And reading Catalyst really helped me. Like, oh yes. my God, I hope you guys have read Catalyst because that helped me so much in the movie. Yep, I agree. Uh, right from the get-go, where Catalyst, uh, what Catalyst gives you, it puts you into a position where you kind of know what's happening. Right? Yeah, you're start. ready. Yeah, you're ready to walk in there. And as soon as the movie starts, you're like, oh, I know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So... We're going to give you our rating so you can know what we think of this movie. So um, I've never given a 10 out of 10 for a movie before. I think the highest movie that I've ever scored since I started this show was a 9.5 for Captain America Civil War. Um, so that's how I'm really going to judge this movie. Um, Force Awakens came out before I did this show for Force Awakens. I actually gave that a 9.5 as well. Um, so 
even though I didn't do it on air, that was kind of, I had a little few plot holes with Force Awakens. So for this movie, I liked it better than both of those movies. So I'm giving it a 9.8 out of 10. A 9.8 9.8. I can't give it a 10 out of 10, and I'll tell you guys why in the spoilers part, because there's a few things that irked me in this movie. Um, Just a couple, though. Just, like, it's a great Star Wars film, guys. And uh, in the spoilers, I'll tell you where it ranks in my Star Wars films. Um, But Okay. Um, I've never ranked a movie out of 10, I guess, officially on air before well use <clears throat> use my <throat> judgment scale right what would you give the force awakens um the force awakens i would put i don't know if we're breaking it down 9.5 9.8 that's that makes it kind of out of 100 doesn't it? no <laughs> makes your scale from 0. 0.1 all you, the way you, to you could if you want um i would say that the force awakens yeah, don't leave any dead air or anything. Nine. So nine out of ten? Yeah, just be, I don't know about the points. Okay, the and point, point. and what about uh, Captain America Civil War? Did you like that more or less than Force Awakens? I'm, I'm Star Wars guy, so I, had, I have to go with Force Awakens. But I did enjoy Civil War. Um, there are parts in Civil War that are iffy for me, so I would put that at maybe an eight. Okay, so now you can judge Rogue One. Civil War was an eight for you. Force Awakens was a nine for you. Where's this Rogue One? Nine point two. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So I like just this better a than little Force better Awakens, than Force yes. Awakens. But it sounds like you may have had a few more problems with this movie than I did then, because I'm giving it a nine point eight, and we'll get into that. The problems that I have Not with yet. this movie. Uh, 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 okay. Continue on with the video for that. So, we've warned you. That was our non-spoilers review. Up goes the spoiler alert. Uh, we are totally going to spoil this film. This is your last chance. Spoiler alert. So, please shut it down. Go see the movie. Come back. And here we go. So, let's start right at the beginning of the movie. And let's talk about what was the effect of having no opening crawl. What did you think? It was jarring. Um, it was jarring, but there were a lot of rumors that it was going to be that way. Yeah. So I kind of still had a little myself hope. Up. Yes, I, I was. I was just hoping. myself, but it hits. Boom! No opening crawl. Uh, no Star Wars at the beginning. The movie just starts. It starts a long time ago, a galaxy far, far away. Boom! Movie. You're right into it. And pan <clears throat> up, not pan down. It panned up. The only, there's there only one other movie that did that, and that was in the prequels. Yeah. Where it panned up. So there's precedent for it, right? Yes. So, but not a precedent for not having Star Wars, for not having an opening crawl. There was a, a musical note that kind of gave you that, bump, but it was on the introduction of the movie. So there was no Star Wars, just a kind of a jarring... Dun. We got a little bit of the story <clears throat> of uh, Jin and Galen when Jin's younger yeah. and how Krennic goes to get them. And then this graphic goes up, says Rogue One. And honestly, yeah. that's the first problem I had with this movie. That graphic looked like a three-year-old made it. I could have <laughs> made that in Word. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. You know what? This is Rogue One. This is a Star Wars film. Like, it was literally highlighted. You could do that in any program. You could do Star Wars in any program. I, I mean, know, the effect but just Star Wars. It's not It didn't super say Star fancy. Wars, though. I know, but, but just having Star Wars on the screen, it's not super fancy. Rogue One was kind of the same. Just there with some yellow and some black and kind of the same i know I it's the star wars title i know <laughs> i wanted more yeah right. uh yeah they i mean the the opening scene with the opening sequence when she's young it kind of went for a little bit and gave you some story some background and then that title came up which is very different from any star wars movie and i liked i liked that it was different um yeah. for me i don't think it needed the opening crawl because i read catalyst but i said yeah. this to jason if you haven't read Catalyst, I think you needed an opening crawl for this movie. Because it. if I hadn't read Catalyst, I'm going to be confused if I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Right. Um, so the average moviegoer going to see this that doesn't know the Star Wars lore like we do, you might be a little bit, I think the first ten minutes, you might be a little confused as to what's happening. Because there's so many references. Saw Guerrera um, from mm-hmm. the Clone Wars. Like, that all happens in the... Uh, 
oh, what's her mother's name? Lyra. Lyra, yeah. So Lyra calls Saw Guerrera, and we know from Catalyst that she had given him a little communications chip to get a hold of him if he ever needed him. Um, they're hiding on this planet, and Krennic comes in. And this is all just the opening, what, three, four minutes or five minutes before the yeah, Rogue One title? A little, little bit, yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I loved it. I love that build-up where you see that relationship between Krennic and Galen. And, you know, he's been hiding for a lot of years from the Empire because he doesn't want to build their weapon. And then Krennic comes in and you can just see that. And they're trying to hide. He's trying to hide his family. And mm -hmm. then Lyra comes out. I'll let you take it over from there. Not having, not having read Catalyst, or if you had not read Catalyst, I don't know what you would think of that opening scene. Because there's not a ton of dialogue in it. Some great kind of looks between uh, Galen and Krennic. And with having read that, we're very much informed about what's going on. These right guys now. are old buddies. Yeah, they're, they're old, old buddies. They're, they've been through it. And they, they do not like each other. And, you know, Krennic just wants to use him. But if you didn't have that information, I don't know how that hoping scene would play. Exactly. You'd be a little confused wondering where we're at in the story, I think. So that was the opening part. So now we're going to get into what did we like about this movie. So I'm going to give you the opening so that I don't <clears throat> steal some of your thunder. So what did you like about this movie? Uh, this movie is for Star Wars fans. This movie is littered with Star Wars references, Star Wars looks, creatures... Uh, it's the movie I've been waiting up. for for a long time. It, yeah, it it does a really good job also of bridging the gap between the prequels and the original trilogy. And Clone Wars. And Clone Wars. And there's a few Force Awakens yeah. characters thrown and in there Rebels. for good measure. And Rebels. It, this thing is tying the entire Star Wars universe together. There's characters from everywhere... And it's it's brilliant. I'm almost speechless. So I'm going to get into Take a it. little bit of detail here on uh, some of the big things that I liked. The first thing, like th there's there's really five things that are standing out to me about this movie. The first one is is that this is a war film. Holy crap! I have this never is. understood the rebels more than I do now because we had a lot in New Hope and Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. We always saw the rebels as these beautiful unsung heroes that never did anything bad yeah. and they did some bad stuff in this movie like yes they did um what was what's the uh cassian yeah cassian andor yeah. he kills his buddy because he can't climb the wall and get away yeah. and he's like i'm not gonna leave you to die with these stormtroopers so it's okay boom shoots him i love that you know yeah. why because they're showing this is a rebellion and they can't afford him to let those secrets out right um I, I felt like they were almost like terrorists, but they were on the right side of the terrorists. Isn't that weird? Like they, yeah. you get the feeling that they're they're they'll do anything for their cause. They will do anything to make sure their to cause happens. To that point, happens. Star Wars has been really good at like black and white. Yeah, these are the good guys. These are the bad guys. This is a different Star Wars movie. That black and white isn't there anymore. No. Nope. And you're you're told, hey, this is Cassian. He's the good guy. But then he starts doing these things, and you're like, "Wait, what? He's the he's our good guy, and he's killing his own man." And yeah, but it was for the doing cause. Some strange things, but it's for the cause. But it's gray, right? It's it's lots of shades it's right of on that line of black and white, and you don't know what's happening for a little bit there. So then I get into Chirrut Imwe. Okay, this is really other than Darth Vader, he's the only tie to the Force, and maybe. Maybe Jin a little bit with the crystal. Um, yeah, yeah, just vaguely, yeah. Yeah, but Chirrut Imwe believes in the Force. He, it's his religion. Yeah. He, he is, And he portrays it so well. I totally believe, like when you see uh, church on television on Sunday and you see these people in the United States and the South that truly believe in their God and they... It, it, 
it was Chirrut Imwe with the Force. Mm-hmm. He he practiced what he preached. He talked about the Force. What was his line? Like he kept repeating that line when he was praying. I am the Force. I am the one force with is... the Force. The Force is with me. Yes. Something to that effect. I am one with the Force. The Force is with me. I'm one with the Force. The Force was yeah. with me. And a lot of the guys around him didn't believe in the Force. They're like, whatever. But he, he wins over his buddy Baze at the end. Mm-hmm. His buddy Baze, like, as... And spoilers, we told you, Jared Imway dies in this movie. When he dead. And when <laughs> he dies, his buddy looks up and he's like, I believe. I believe in the Force. Yeah. And he just goes out and... He has a tragic ending to him. By the way, I just want to say I told you so. Everybody died. Everybody. Dies. Everybody died except Spoiler Vader. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew it was going to happen, and I loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. This is the Star Wars movie I wanted. To that point, this being a Star Wars movie, this being a different Star Wars movie, this, yeah, it starts to get into territory where... Star Wars has, for the most part, always been really family friendly. And this is an intense movie. Everybody dies. If you've got younglings at home, see this movie first before you take them. Yeah, so you know if there's any goggle parts where you got to cover their eyes, or you'll know your kids and what they can handle. Yeah, exactly. It's an intense movie. Everybody dies in the end. They, They do the death scenes with a, a modicum of decency they do they, yeah there's you know, no blood splattering yeah, there's, no there's no arms gore. flying off like you see in uh, saving private ryan right. that was really great that's what you know what that i was i respect the director he could have went that road and he didn't and yeah. he made it a star wars film and maybe he did and maybe yeah. once they went back for the reshoots and said that's too much then I, then, I the then right. I give Disney the credit. Then I give Disney the credit for knowing what a star wars film should oh, look like this is a disney movie yeah wow yeah <laughs> Yeah, this is like the red line for Disney. I don't think they'll ever get darker than this. Yeah, this is this is a it's fantastic. It's a so fantastic movie. the second thing is Darth Vader. Oh my God! So in the trailer, when you see the bath to tank and you see the guy coming in and you think, okay, maybe the Emperor. But why would the Emperor kneel? Well, guess what? That was Darth inside Darth Vader's castle. And I'm going to let you Darth talk Vader's a little bit castle. about the castle because you know way more about the history of this from the yeah. books and legends. And so go for yeah, it. This isn't books. This isn't legends. This is Lucas. The Darth Vader's castle has been in the works for a long time. Uh, since, the, since the beginning when he started writing, Darth Vader's castle had always kind of been in there. And then they took it out and it was in there. And, they and were didn't gonna... it look like it was on Mus- Mustafar? It did look like it was on Mustafar. Yeah. If it's not Mustafar, it's another hot lava planet. I have a feeling that's where he went back because that's where his demise was. And he built his castle there. His demise or his birth? Sorry, his birth. Correct. Vader's birth. Yeah. So he went back to his home world, Mustafar, and built a castle. And it was a kick-ass castle. It was a kick-ass castle. Vader's castle is in this. Oh, my God. That was mind-blowing. So tell them about the Bacta tank. And that Bacta tank. Bacta. Bacta Sorry. tank, yeah. So just some worker for Vader comes in and informs critics here to see you. And the, the camera rolls up and the, kind of the smoke clears. And we see Vader soaking in a Bacta tank. No armor. So with the tubes in his mouth tubes, to breathe. Amputee. Yep. No arms on. Water comes down. He can down. take all of that stuff off, apparently. Well, because if he stays in the bath tank, it keeps him from healing. And <coughs> it probably... Yeah. I'm just saying his suit comes off. I never knew his arms could come yep. off after the fact. But I guess for repair or whatever, you'd have to be able to take them off. And he's in there just hanging out, floating in a hot tub. Yeah. The, um, the water starts to drain a little bit. We start to see his bald head and his scars, and then the camera cuts away. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to see, like, uh, it wasn't Hayden Christensen um, in there, I'm pretty sure. It was we don't just, see anything, It was just yeah. CGI, probably, or maybe a guy in a skin mask. Because yeah. you don't get to, you get to see enough that you know it's deformed Vader, but you don't get to see enough to see what it, it is. is. Yeah. Which is perfect, because yeah. don't take the mystery away from Darth Vader. Right. They, yeah, they did a fantastic job. They give you just enough, but they don't take the mystery away. And then Vader's not in this movie a whole lot, but that, every time he's there, you know it's Darth Vader, and his presence is known. What, he's in it? I think he was only in it the twice. That the, time that and then scene, the one at the end. Well, the back to scene and then when he's confronting Va- or with Krennic, when he's talking to Krennic. But that's the same yeah, scene. Yeah, in the same scene there. 
Yeah, and he and get and he chokes out Krennic, but he doesn't kill him, and it was awesome. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, um, what was the line? Something about his aspirations. Don't, Don't choke, choke on, on your aspirations, because yes. he said, "Am I still in charge, Lord <laughs> Vader?" Yeah, starts choking him. Don't choke on your aspirations. Nice. Yeah, Vader is a badass in this movie. And so let's go to the end since we're talking about Vader. Okay. Let's talk about that final scene. Okay. But let's let's stop at like don't don't tell them what happened at the end end cuz we're going to save that for the end of the movie. So just okay. talk about that scene and how it leads up to a new hope. How it leads up to a new hope, but yeah. not revealing Not the revealing last thing. the last thing. Okay. Um Yeah, so the the rebels are on Scarif. There's a huge battle, space battle, ground battle, everything. Return of the Jedi. Very the Return of the Jedi. Return of the yeah. Jedi, the final three scenes. Um, and Vader kind of comes in very late to the battle. But it's at a point where the rebellion had, had transmitted the signals up to the ship. And they were trying to get these... Uh, the signals. The signals for the Death Star plans. They were trying to get the Death Star plans out of the battle and into the rebels' hands. Yep. And Vader shows up on the ship. They they cut the door open. A couple stormtroopers or death troopers, I guess, flow in. Then Vader shows up in a hallway full of rebel soldiers. The ones that you see in new, like the same same outfits. Alderaan rebel soldiers. Yeah, we're starting to get very reminiscent of something here. Alderaan rebel soldiers. And Vader shows up. It's kind of smoky. It's kind of dark. And all of a sudden, his lightsaber comes on. And in the, movie theater, of Rebel the movie theater screams. <laughs> yeah. like, it, the <laughs> eruption in the theater from the fans was oh, awesome yeah. at that point. And you know, it's the time has come for these Rebel soldiers. You know, and it's just the guys with the, the weird bike hats in, in a hallway with Darth Vader. And he takes care of business. Uh, Mr. Vader, So, <laughs> what did you have to say? Darth Julius Vader was Julius amazing. Vader. Okay, he comes through this hallway and he just starts mowing people down. He force pushes people. He blocks blaster bolts. He cuts people down. Uh, then he gets to the next door. He opens the door with the force because they're trying to close it on him. Yeah. Once again, he cuts in, cuts down. And the whole time, they keep throwing the plans to the next guy and throwing the plans to the next guy because they got to get him off this ship yeah. so they can get him back to the Rebellion. And Vader is just mowing people down. And they get the door closed and the ship takes off. And Vader's standing there and he's looking out and you just know, hey, we're going to see him again in about seven and a half to ten minutes when A New Hope starts. Right. Exactly. And it was awesome. Very awesome. And I think in that scene... it. It goes by quickly, but like you were saying, he's force pushing guys, he's choking guys, he grabs a guy and throws him against the ceiling, and he's holding him up there while he's battling another guy. And I think it goes by quick, but I think he actually grabs a blaster bolt and throws he it did. at a different guy. He did absolutely. Wow. It was it was reminiscent of Kylo Ren in the Force Awakens, stopping him, but more yeah. powerful. He grabs, he it, grabs it, throws and it, throws it, throws it with the Force. Yeah, he's they went full out Vader with this thing. Yeah, they and didn't hold him and I like the way that they showed like in the uh, New Hope he was very clunky with the lightsaber, but in this mm -hmm. you could see that they were using the same form that Anakin was using in the Clone Wars. Like you could, okay. I could see Anakin in the suit. Like I could feel with that force and the way that he was using the lightsaber, it was the mm -hmm. same style. Right. I don't know if you got that too. Uh, <clears throat> I, I guess because of Vader's size and his presence, it still wasn't like. It still wasn't like Anakin because Anakin was moving all over no. and jumping and everything. He's still, but he was trying. Just a big, massive tank that's moving forward. And yeah, you could see the the style with it, but it was still a lumbering kind of attack. But definitely, his control of the Force was was outstanding. Okay, so I'm sure there's lots more things we like, and we'll get to that a little bit later when we talk about different things in it. Um, but I'd like to talk about what I didn't like about this movie, and it's going to okay. be a very short conversation. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like the way, do you guys remember in Guardians of the Galaxy, where every time they went to a new planet, up popped this letter and the yeah. name of the planet. Name of the planet. That's yeah. in Rogue One. And you know what? I don't like it, because they go to a new planet, and Yavin 4, Rebel Base, um, all these different planets, Jedha. You know, come to think of it, though, it wasn't Force Awakens, too. No, it wasn't. They, they, they did have like 
The Hosnian system, didn't that come up? No, no, they talked. I'm positive. There was nothing like that. This total Guardians of the Galaxy ripoff, and it's not necessary in a Star Wars movie. It was very noticeable, yeah, because they did quite a bit of planet jumping at the start. Yes. And so it was like every five minutes, oh, new planet, oh, new planet. To me, that's the fun of a Star Wars movie because you get to hear them talking. Go back and find out about it later. Yes. I don't want to know, oh, okay, pause, write that down. No, no. Star Wars, don't give us everything. We're smart moviegoers. Yeah. We are, and Disney knows that. We're smart moviegoers, and we will find out what planets those are. And we're going to know them all after we've seen it for about five or six times. Yeah. So, didn't like that. Um, the other thing that I really didn't like about this movie, and uh, it was the CGI that Jason talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. When, we're not going to talk about the last one, but we'll talk about this, the, the Grand Moff Tarkin. Grand they Tarkin. CGI'd Peter Cushing's face. Yep. Right? Yeah. And I don't know if there was a stand-in actor, if it was just completely digital, or um, I'm I'm wondering if they used the same technology that they did on Robert Downey Jr. in Civil War. Was that Civil War or uh yeah, yeah, that was the beginning of Captain America's Civil War. Yeah, and Michael Douglas in Ant Man, where they made them look really young. Um, I don't know if but he's did dead. So how like would that. they do that? Well, I mean, just the same digital technology where you're putting a face on someone else's face. Maybe something to that effect. I, it just to me, it looked like it was all CGI. I thought it was just like yeah. obviously they had an actor there, but I think they had him done up with the uh, green suit, the green or suit, and all the things. And I think they totally CGI uh, the old Tarkin. Now I forgot about it near the end. Like it, it, it almost seemed like his face got better, or maybe I was just used to it and I gave up eating it and near the end of seeing Tarkin and what he was doing I, I accepted and I said okay but I think I don't know I think it would have been cooler to always see the back of his head and hear him talking and do it in holograms and I think they could have got around it more he was in the movie a lot more than I expected me too he was there he was there more than Vader uh, he had quite a few run-ins with Krennic um, as, as far as the CGI that's exactly what I was talking about <sighs> It was good. It was kind of cool to see Peter Cushing yep. in this movie, but it's CGI, and you know it's CGI, obviously because he's dead. But there's a few facial ticks here and there that you're you're like, okay, that's CGI, and it starts pulling you out of the movie. Um, like you said, you think that it gets better as it goes on. I think when we first see him, it's very well lit. Yes, which is an enemy to CGI. And, then and later on, as it, it goes dark. on, they, call. it's in the dark. They have a couple shadows on his face, and it's hidden a little bit more. So you start to accept it more. But yeah, when we first are introduced to him, it's really bright in there, and you see it full on. This is Peter Cushing digital version, Peter Cushing 2.0. Yeah. So anything cool, but uh, anything yeah. else you didn't like about this movie? Um, anything else? The only thing, the only other thing that I didn't like, well, the words, the titles of the planets. So you agree with me on yeah, that? Yeah, we don't need those. Um, the only other thing is, I really want to take my kids to this. And yeah. my, my 10-year-old daughter, yeah, okay, I have a 6-year-old son that he's going to have to have some lap time on daddy for certain scenes. Like, it's, it's okay, buddy. Um, I don't think there's any scenes where... It's so gruesome that I have to cover his eyes or anything to that extent. But there might be some consoling. But there's some consoling. There's like everybody, everybody dies. dies. <laughs> everybody <laughs> dies. And like we said, they did a really good job of kind of glossing over most people's deaths. But there's no question as to whether they're dead or not. Everybody dies. Okay, so let's get to the big question everybody that watched our droids episode is doing. Where does K2SO, he was number five on your top ten five. droids list. Where does he go to and why? <sighs> K2SO moved up the list, definitely. Um, so you had R2-D2 number R2, one. R2, BB-8, I think I went IG-88, yeah. C-3PO, K2SO. Uh, he's at least number three, for sure. So the only two droids above him now are R2 and BB-8. And R2 and BB-8, and he might even go to number two. When you see that a few more times. When I see it a few more times. But, but after one time, he's already at three. Yeah, they did a brilliant job with him. Um, so, what'd you like about him? He's the design of him is amazing. Okay, two S O. The design is amazing. Uh, kind of reminiscent of the IG eighty eight design, the tall droid, the big menacing tall droid. Um, they give him 
the attitude of an R2. It's not turned up to 11 like Chopper is. Yeah. So uh, they give him the mouth of C-3PO, but not cheesy, right? There's no... He R2. was funny. He was funny and, and really and funny. Like comedic not, timing was great. Yeah. It was it wasn't funny to be funny to throw funny in a Star Wars movie. It was a well written character. Yeah, it was a very well written character. Uh, Alan Tudyk, he voiced the character, and I think he was actually in one of those yeah he was suits to, to on stilts on set. Yeah, he was actually walking on stilts in this exactly. movie, and it was fantastic. Alan Tudyk did a great job voicing it. They did a great job with the CGI. It's a fully CGI droid character now. Um, he was fantastic. and I couldn't tell it was CGI. Yeah, that exactly. I could not. It looked like a robot walking metal. Yeah, D- couldn't tell once it was CGI. I would imagine they did. They did kind of some replacements, maybe with like a, a half puppet, maybe something. I will, and we'll find that out when Blu-ray comes out and all those behind-the-scenes stuff comes out. But yeah, they did a fantastic job with the effects on this guy, and he's he's in the movie a lot. He's got a lot of dialogue, and he kicks ass, and he is funny. I think, other than Jyn so he is the most well-developed character in this movie. Yes, we know his backstory. We know how he became with the rebels. Um, he he's fighting for the rebellion. He has he's a droid with a uh, heart, with uh, no heart at sometimes. He's <laughs> he he you know at the end he, he doesn't like Jin at the beginning, but boy he likes her at the end. And mm. he goes out in a tragic her, hero's death. Actually, of all the people's deaths, Hero. his was the most heroic pronounced. pronounced. Absolutely, like everyone else is a little glossed over and. Ex- Explosion kind of blinds them out of screen, but his, he takes shot after shot after Just shot. He's boom, kind of grrr, grrr, boom, going boom. down. And we see the glow go out of his eyes. Yeah. His death is. <laughs> As for a droid, you have this crazy connection with him, just like, oh my gosh. I think the only person that I was sadder to see die than K2SO (laughs) was uh, Chirrut Imwe. Yeah. Because of the way he was believing in the Force, and he got there. The Force got him there to shut shut down the shield. Uh, Yeah, and then, you know what? He got killed. and Because Baze was there, and I saw how much it hurt Baze, it hurt me. I think that's why I got to relate with Baze. To feel the pain of his best friend losing him, and but K two S O was right there. I was I was a little bit uh, emotional when K two S O died, yeah. and that's that's impressive when you can do that, never knowing this character before, and get somebody emotionally attached and then kill them all in the same movie. Yeah, very that's much. great storytelling. Very much so. Uh, another thing that I really liked about this movie. Uh, going into the movie, me being a guy who likes the Force, who likes the mysticism of Star Wars, I was really afraid that there was going to be nothing in that respect. For gloss me. it over? Yeah, just really gloss it over. There wasn't very much in this movie of that, but they talked about the wills. Uh, Star Wars was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away when Lucas was pinned to paper. It was the Journal of the Wills. Yeah. And this is, the, I think, the first time that the wills are actually mentioned in canon. Um, in tell, the, tell the viewers if they don't know what the journals of the wills are. Just give them a little... We don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. that, Like, the journal of the wills was, was originally the title, but then there was some, some rumors and some talks where possibly Yoda was a will or something to that effect, but... That's all. No. So hopefully we find no. out more in one of the <sighs> Rebels episodes or something down the line or a book. In I would love for it to show up in a Rebels episode or maybe a Cheered Imway book. Cheered and Base. Maybe Possibly. we'll get that book. I, and it does seem like they're doing a lot more with this religion of the Force. Yeah. Which it's cool, but it's got its downsides. But I mean, they did it here and they did it in Force Awakens. Um, there are some things that I'm going to need some repeat viewing because oh, yeah. they really the lines went quick and they glossed over it. But Chirrut Imwe said something about the wills and the force, and I was like, "What? What? what and was I, that? I had to point out to you, he missed. There was this announcement in the back of the Rebel hangar mm-hmm. where they said, uh, "General, oh my, Sindula. General Sindula, please report to the hangar bay." So I'm, I know it's not Cham because I think Cham's dead. Yeah, he died. So um, he I died. think they're talking about Hera, yeah. and they're like. 
so General Sindula, and we know because we saw the picture of the ghost. Yeah. The ghost was in the final battle, so she was flying the ghost. Now, we don't know. She could be the only Rebels character that's alive, but I have a feeling, my prediction is, is the last season of the last episode of Rebels is going to take place in the same battle that was in Rogue One, but from the ghost's perspective. And I think it's going to be a glorious end. We didn't see the ghost get exploding or anything like that. The, they left it open that it could have got away. It could have blown up with some of the other Rebel ships. And that's how I think they're going to end Rebels. And oh my god, if they tie that in, it's just going to be brilliant, yeah. I think. Uh, it would be difficult. It's difficult for me to see them finishing in a, a series on Disney XD in the death of everybody, like they did in this movie. Oh, I can see it. <sighs> Disney XD will do it. But uh, it, it would be a fantastic die I'm predicting it. I predicted all the people who okay. died in Rogue One. I was right. Okay. I'm predicting it. Okay. okay. We'll see. We'll see if that comes out. So, let's get into now. Who is your favorite character in this movie and why? K2SO. Really? As I sit right now, K2SO is my favorite character in this movie. Um, he didn't disappoint me at all. Um, I went into it expecting to like him, and I did more. I liked him more than I thought I would. Um, having said that, I really like Jen Erso. I went into this movie not really expecting to like her very much. Yeah. But as you said, they developed her character really well, and you really got attached to her, and she did a fantastic job. Um, heart wise, it's Jin or so for sure. Cause I liked the little girl. I liked her growing up. I liked the way she took over the, that rebellion. Like it should have been casting an end or leading this mission, mm -hmm. but they kept looking to her cause she knew what to say. She had been with Saw Guerrera when she was younger. He, she repeated some of Saw's phrases. They, they rallied around this girl and she became the leader of this group and yeah. she took that charge and she didn't want to. You could tell, but she knew she had to because it was her father's legacy. She had to prove that he put this... Um, what did he put in there that I predicted? Oh, a weakness in the Death Star? Well, I think, I think so your a weakness words, in the I Death Star? I think your words were, though, that he put in the, the, uh, the thermal exhaust port. Which they didn't say that he put in yeah, the thermal exhaust port. he did. He put in a trigger in the, in the reactor that if, if triggered... Would, would blow, blow it up. The whole thing. Galen Erso did it. I predicted it. <laughs> Two predictions right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I, Jin, but there's another character I think I like more in this movie. I think it was better written. It's not K2SO. Okay. I love Jared Imwe. He was I fantastic. I love this yeah. character. You don't see him on... He's not in a ton of screen time. Right. But when he's on screen, he's with the Force. Yep. And he's praying. He, he's not necessarily using the nope, force nope nope he just believes in it but the will of the force he talks will, about something about the, the will of the force and maybe the force is using him yep you know what i yep, mean yep maybe yep. the force knows he yep. be he believes in us so we're gonna help him out definitely um and the force is definitely helping him yeah and this yep. this character i was very sad when he died like i knew it was coming i knew they were all dying but this character for me had so many levels and depths and the fact that he had Baze as his sidekick. It reminded me of Chewie and Han. Um, whereas Baze was Chewie and this was my Han Solo for this movie. Oh, wow. Th that's just how I looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, so he's my favorite. <laughs> then Jin and K2S. So I think they're a tie for me. They're my next two favorite. Okay. Yeah, I was I was really impressed with Chirrut as well. In some of the trailers that we see... <sighs> He, he almost looks cheesy in the trailers. Yeah. But the way that it plays out in the movie, it's not cheesy at all. No. And he does a fantastic job. And he's got some a few funny little one-liners yeah. about, about his blindness and stuff like that. But uh, Yeah, yeah and they put a bag a, over his head because they, they don't want him yeah. to see the way to Saw's uh, hideout. And he's like, seriously? I'm blind. <laughs> yeah, they did a fantastic job with that character as well. But... Uh, I mean, and who knows, I'm going to see it tomorrow, and maybe after I see it tomorrow, I'll have a different favorite character. I'm sure every time I see it, I'm going to yeah. pick up other things that's going to get me excited about somebody else. Okay, so before we get into that last mind-blowing thing, is there anything else about this movie that you want to talk about? Krennic. 
Let's we go. We haven't really talked about Krennic. Okay. Um, I was incredibly impressed with Krennic and Catalyst. I knew going into this that Krennic was going to be an awesome character, and he is. He's... Uh, He's conniving and he's battling his way to the top. He's trying to get to the top as hard as he can. Um, he does fall a little short. A little bit, yeah. <clears throat> a little short of getting <laughs> to the top. He did also. Um, but the character and the the maliciousness and the conniving, it's all there. And uh, Ben Mendelsohn, the yep. actor's name, fantastic job. This guy is a great Star Wars villain. Oh, yeah. He's got the right <laughs> amount of... Uh, Hatred. He's got the right amount of um, y- you despise him because he's so sneaky and sinister and plotting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you go, oh, this little weasel. Um, he's got everything that a good villain needs. Yeah. And he holds his own with Tarkin for a scene. For a little while yeah. until Tarkin fires the Death Star to kill him. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's let's fire this giant Death Star weapon that probably costs 10 million credits every time you pull the trigger. Yeah. Just to kill one guy. Oh, and I guess we'll blow up. You know, they the only rebels. used it at one quarter power. Or yeah. Quarter power <laughs> but uh, you know what? Don't piss off Tarkin, man. He'll yeah. fire the Death Star at your head. And he did. Yeah. It was awesome. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but yeah, really impressed with Ben Middleson and the character of Krennic. Okay. Good anything job. else about the movie that strikes you that you mm. want to talk about? Cassie and Endor. Cassie and Endor. Great. We, ta- we talked about early how he, he shot his buddy i don't know how close of a buddy he was but he, he was certainly he was a around on his side yeah uh, or was he a spy though was he just no. getting some information but anyway he kind of kills this guy in cold blood and you're just like what the hell this guy is supposed to be our good guy and then he kind of back and forth a little bit he does another questionable thing later on where he he gets uh saw's guy yeah um yeah he was back and forth and you don't know whether you're gonna like him or you're gonna hate him but uh, he did a good job as well. Uh, they all did a good job. And Saw Guerrera, <laughs> you bring up Saw. I, I want to mm. give Forrest Whitaker some props because he was he acted this role well. He crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and Saw Guerrera was crazy. Yeah. If you watched him in the Clone Wars, like this guy would do anything. He he is a true terrorist. Like I think the rebels are even afraid of him because he'll do anything for the cause. He'll blow up innocent people. He'll kill children. Like he doesn't care as long as he, he does it his way. Right. Actually, he'll kill children. They were, they attacked. Yeah. And there was that girl right out in the middle of the street. Absolutely. He, anyway. he didn't care. Yeah. Um, and you know what? <clears throat> At the end, when they killed him, like. He's only in, what, the first 25 minutes of the movie or yeah, 20 minutes? Not much, yeah. they, they killed him off pretty quick, and I'm kind of glad they did because I don't know if I want to see that kind of character too much in a Star Wars movie. I like they hinted at it. I like they gave it to us, but I didn't want to see that run through the whole movie. Yeah, and he's... Uh, Forrest Whitaker does a fantastic job. He's not all upstairs, no. and y- he plays that very well, and you can see it. Well, watching your sister fall to her death, I think that probably in the Clone Wars <laughs> right? flipped him. Yeah. And that's when he became the terrorist. And we saw, we're we seeing the end result of 19 years later. This mm-hmm. is 19 years of war-torn song. Well, yeah, he He's still half did, mechanical. He still saved Jen, yeah. right, and raised her to the age of 16, I think. 15, they, said. 15. they said. And, uh, and then he left her. But we don't know what happened to him because he is war-torn. He's... Oh. Bits and pieces, and, legs breathing yeah. through an aspirator sometimes. Yep. Like he's he's half metal. He's Darth Vader, uh, but not a really good Darth Vader. I'm wondering if his breathing tube is a drug. Maybe to because to kill the pain. To kill the pain, but yeah. it kind of messes with his head because there's a scene where he he takes a hit of this thing and he kind of goes and the eyes are like, like what? Yeah, and he he starts talking some weird stuff. So I'm thinking that's some sort of pain medication star wars pain medication so i think we i've gone over everything that i want to go over with this movie yeah um hmm i wonder why do you have a princess leia glass over there jason uh the fantastic reveal at the end of this movie of our one and only princess she'll always be royalty to us oh my god mine she was alone i lost my mind they're getting the plans out, and they're running down the hallways, and Vader's chasing them, and they get onto Leia's ship that's at the beginning of um, A New Hope, the yeah. one where they like open it. Tanta V4. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, 
you're like, oh, that's cool. And I thought that's how it was going to end. And then all of a sudden, the guy's walking through with the plans and the door's open and it's the white cape yeah. from behind. I'm like, okay, that's how it's going to end. Nope, she turns around and it's CGI, young Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia, and it was awesome. And Carrie Fisher's voice. Yeah. She speaks. She gets the final word in this movie. It was homage 110% mm-hmm. to A New Hope. I loved it. I loved Fantastic. the ending of this movie and i can't wait like if we weren't taping this show i would have come home and immediately put in a new hope i want to watch a new hope so much because this movie this movie is going to make me love these rebels so much more oh and we didn't talk about red five red (laughs) five and dutch 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 vander is in there dutch is in there from the new hope in the battle what is he he's a gold leader or red leader he's gold gold leader yeah yeah they actually pull a uh, I think at least they two clips, clips from, from a, a new, new hope, hope and put them in here in the in the dog fighting scenes and Dutch like not digital Dutch not a different actor the original Dutch boom in here and he's calling rogues <laughs> calling signs and, and then <laughs> red, five. red five's flying around he's like this red five I got a guy actually like- I think the guy that called out red five he's like stay close red five I yeah. think that was a clip from a new hope as well yeah uh, red five we don't get to see for very long he dies. <laughs> I guess they needed an opening for somebody. They needed an opening for somebody. <laughs> so we find out who the original Red Five is. May he rest in peace. Yeah. And now Luke's going to be the new Red Five. Oh, it was awesome. The question I have with the way that this thing ended, uh, we know that's Leia in the ship, and it, it's escaped, and Vader's standing there looking over her, his, her ship as it flies away. How much time do we have? Does she get away? They, they get into hyperspace immediately, and she's off to Tatooine. That... You, you might have missed it because it was so fast, but when Bail Organa, and we didn't talk about Bail, Bail Organa's in this, Jimmy Smith, yep. he <clears> says, <throat> he's like, oh yeah, I got the perfect person for this. Can I trust, you trust her? I trust her with I my life. I trust her with my life. Yeah. And they're talking about, what about the Jedi? What about the, and he's like, yeah, he helped me in the Clone Wars. He'll help me again. He's been in hiding. They're talking about Obi-Wan. Yep. And he's sending Leia to find Obi-Wan. Right. So that's what's happening is she's on her way to Tatooine and he's getting in a ship uh, and they're following. This movie is right before. Like I think maybe half an hour passes in that flight to Tatooine and then they're having the battle above Tatooine. She puts the plans in C3PO yeah. and R2 R2. and it goes yeah. to Tatooine to find Kenobi. It... If it happens right away like that, it makes that scene a little strange for me in A New Hope when she was like, we were on a diplomatic mission, blah, blah, blah. But he didn't know she was on there. Yeah, but that's the ship. But he, he, does, he there's lots the of ship. those ships. But no, he didn't follow it. He's he's in the... He, he just sees the, the ship take off. Right, he sees the ship take off, but then a half hour later, they're capturing that ship. Right, because he thinks that that's a ship. But she's playing dumb. She's like, what are you talking about? We're on a diplomatic mission from Alderaan. Hmm. Like, she could play dumb. Come on. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying she could Give play Give Star she Wars a dumb. little bit. I just... Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. I can see that. So, last thing. Where does this land? And I can't give you a, a solid where it lands in my movies right now because I need to see these movies seven, eight, nine times. Yeah. I need to watch them on video. I probably can't honestly tell you where this movie will land in all the Star Wars until a year from now. Right. Um, because I really need to digest this movie. But first watching, loving this movie, um, I I always have trouble putting Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I can never figure out which one is better for me. They're always one and two, and they're always flopping. Um, and then it goes New Hope, then Force Awakens, then Revenge of the Sith, then Attack of the Clones, and then Phantom Menace. That's my order of how I like the Star Wars movies. And this one comes in level with star wars a new hope for me like it, it's and this might get better because but i give i give return of the jedi and the empire strikes back a 9.9 out of 10 okay those are just about as close to perfect movies as you can get for me and i'm giving this one a 9.8 so that's where first impression of this movie it's my third favorite star wars movie third or fourth new hope they'll keep going back and forth right now as it sits uh just because of nostalgia i mean you we grew up on those original ones uh, empire is at number one it's gonna take a yoda standalone movie to take empire off of, okay. of number one uh i'm a yoda guy 
that's where we get tons of Yoda. Uh, Empire is my movie. Uh, next, I'm going Star Wars. A next, New Hope. A New Hope. Next, I'm going Return of the Jedi. And this falls right under Return of the Jedi. So this is fourth for you. Yeah. I, so same as me. I liked it better than Force Awakens. Yeah, me too. Uh, I put Force Awakens number five. Um, and then Revenge of the Sith, Attack of the Clones, and Phantom Menace last. So place. we're pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, because again, I don't know. I might like this movie more than A New Hope, but I won't know that for a year. And I might like it more than Empire and Jedi. Who knows? Yeah. This movie, Star Wars movies grow on me. They change. Yeah. They evolve as I evolve as a person. So, and it, this movie does have a ton of nostalgia stuff in oh, it. Oh, we we could we could sit here all we night. We didn't talk about Doctor Evazan. And we could sit here all <laughs> night Baba. and go into all these <laughs> Easter eggs. But you guys, as Star yeah. Wars fans, we want to leave something to chance. <laughs> Find all the Easter eggs. Put them in the comment section below. Yeah. Let us know about Easter eggs we didn't see. That's the fun of Star Wars. <laughs> Let us know. We're all going to get it eventually, so help us out here. Mm -hmm. Jason, let's wrap this up by telling the good people. Uh, you said, what did you give it in the non-spoilers review? What, what did you rate this movie? Uh, 9.2. 9. Okay, 9.2. Yeah. I said 9.8. Yeah. Um, I'm sticking with that for now. Um, and you know what, guys? If you don't go see this movie and you're a Star Wars fan, you are nuts. Yeah. See the movie. Jason, where Amazing. can the good people find you on the internet? If you want to find me, hit up Instagram. I am at Vintage Star Wars over there. You can private message me, comment, like me, hate me, whatever. I'm there. And you can find me on Twitter at Movie Guy Sci Fi. Or if you want to send me an email, we'll read out your emails on the show. My email address is movieguysci-fi at gmail.com. And I'm going to let you close the show with the Star Wars saying of all Star Wars sayings. It's the only time I'm never, ever, ever saying what you usually say. Yes. <laughs> May the Force be with you. Always.